This video was indirectly suggested by my patrons over on Patreon. Well, partially. On a video dealing with the Croydon trams, I got asked, if so much of the tram system is just reworked railway line, is it even actually a tram system? An interesting question that surely had a simple answer, I thought. But then I saw an online discussion about these. These are new buses coming into service in South London next year that are being described as tram buses. Well, I'd just call that a bus. And the more I thought about it, the more I found myself thinking. What even is a tram? How do you define what a tram is? And how does it differ from other vehicles? Think about it. This is a tram. This is a tram. This looks nothing like those, but nevertheless, it is a tram. This does look like a tram, but it isn't. This ran on a tramway, but it isn't a tram. This would once have been called a tram, but it clearly isn't. So, what exactly is a tram? Well, let's do what every hack writer and school pupil with an essay to pad out does, and look at the dictionary. According to the Oxford Dictionary lads, a tram is a passenger vehicle powered by electricity conveyed by overhead cables and running on rails laid in a public road. Well, on that basis, quite a lot of trams in the UK aren't trams. Or at least, not entirely. The systems in London, Manchester and Edinburgh all include tracks that are segregated from the road. Often, the tracks aren't even accessible from the street. That goes for every line that used to be a railway, for instance. But OK, let's say for the sake of argument that it has to have at least part of the line running on or alongside the street. Not that everything that runs on a track in the street is a tram. Conventional trains quite often run on the street, especially in industrial areas. This locomotive, Shannon, was constructed for the Wantage Tramway Company and hauled mostly conventional trains that ran on a roadside tramway. How about the passenger vehicle part? There are freight trams, but they aren't very widespread. This one is the cargo tram of Dresden, which ran from 2001 to 2020 and delivered car parts to the Volkswagen factory. Freight trams are rare, though. The cargo tram was useful because it was a frequent service along a single route. Unless either you have a service that requires heavy use of a single route, or you're delivering to and from places on the tram line, it's easier to send cargo by lorry. There are also maintenance trams, which of course do not normally carry passengers, but again, these are not common compared to the passenger trams. What about that electricity thing? Trams are usually powered by electricity these days, but the Douglas Bay Horse Tramway on the Isle of Man isn't. Trams have been powered by horses, steam, internal combustion, natural gas, ammonia, and just about any other form of power you can think of. But oddly enough, while I'm being pedantic about the power source, the idea that a tram must be powered by electricity is actually a very old one. Have you ever wondered why trolleybuses are called trolleybuses? It's because another word for a tram, at least in America, is a trolley. In fact, back in the early 20th century, trolley buses were also called trackless trams. So clearly, it was thought that tram equals powered from an overhead line, even while steam and horse trams were still in service. There are other vehicles known as trams that are trackless. There are rubber-tired trams, which use a rail to guide them, but otherwise act very much like trolley buses. There is the Autonomous Rail Rapid Transit System, which looks like a tram, but uses no rails at all, and is optically guided. I wouldn't call that a tram, and nor does the law in most places. They're legally classed as buses. Speaking of, what makes a tram bus like the one we talked about at the beginning? Well, according to the manufacturer, Iriza, which I may be pronouncing wrong, it's because they're set out like a tram. They have a similar internal layout and they have low floors. But not all trams have low floors. Look at the ones in Manchester. 
The other way in which these buses resemble trams is that they will be recharged using a pantograph on an overhead wire at the end of their route. So I'd say that really they're just a variant on the trolley bus. Wait a second. Tram. Trolley. Trolley bus. Tram bus. Hmm. So in the end, what are the characteristics of a tram? It's a passenger vehicle, except when it isn't. It's powered by electricity, except when it isn't. It runs along tracks set into the road, except when it doesn't. It seems, frankly, that a tram is anything that's called a tram. UK Tram, a representative body consisting of people involved in the tramway industry, has their own definition. They state that a tram line is a line wholly or in part along the street to which the public have access. It is, wholly or mainly, used for the carriage of passengers. It uses parallel rails which provide support and guidance for vehicles carried on flanged wheels. So, there go the buses that want to be trams. They may, however, fall under legislation covering road vehicles. An interesting additional point UK Tram uses is that tram lines use line-of-sight operation. Trains are guided by signals and the driver operates on the basis that there's not going to be anything on the track. Trams operate on the basis that there might well be something or someone on the track and therefore they operate at a limited speed and can be stopped fairly quickly. This also means that they can operate quite close together, without fear of collision and that you cannot, at present, have a driverless tram. I'm going to throw something else into the mix. A tram is a light rail vehicle. I don't think you can find anything in modern operation on a tramway that could be called a heavy rail vehicle, or even is compatible with heavy rail. So let's consider all this and see if we can't come up with a usable definition. A tram is a light rail vehicle, usually but not always used for passengers, it is capable of street running, even if it doesn't always do so. These days, it is usually powered by electricity, and it is operated using line of sight. But even UK Tram admits that their guidance is just guidance rather than rules, so ultimately, in answer to the question posed by the title, uh, Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please do leave a like and you may wish to subscribe for more. I would like to thank, as ever, my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon and here on YouTube for your support. You are the clear guidelines to my vague suggestions. And I will see you all again very soon. Cheerio.